So first thing I'm going to do is go to LinkedIn's GitHub. Easiest way to do that is just Google LinkedIn and GitHub, and it's probably going to show up. So it should be github.com slash sysbrecker slash LinkedIn, which I'm really sorry because I definitely didn't pronounce that right. But on this website, I just need to look for the Docker Compose file. So if I scroll down to Overview, Installation, there's a section called Using Docker Compose. I'll click that. And under here, I can see ba, 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 you can use the docker-compose.yaml. So I will right-click that and open that in a new tab. And then copy the .env sample, and I will right-click that and open a new tab. And I'm not just pretending to do that right now because I messed up the first video and I'm redoing this one. That's exactly what I did, and they're already open. So I've got those two open. I'm going to go back to my Synology NAS. Now, you're just going to need two programs. In the Package Center, you can just go to type in Container Manager which you probably already have, but if you don't, you can just click it there and then hit install. And then you can also type in text because you'll need this text editor. So I'm going to close out of that and click on Container Manager. I will scoot you to the right a little bit because I know that I'm going to need to open up File Station soon. So on the left-hand side, I'll click Project and then the Create button. So this project name is going to be LinkedIn. Under Path, I need to create that path first. So in File Station, I'll go to File Station, and you should have a Docker share to the left. You can put this anywhere, I guess, but it's probably best to keep it in the Docker share. And then in here, I'm going to create a new folder called LinkedIn and hit OK. And then I'll X out of here. So now I'll click the Set Path button in Container Manager. Under Docker, I'll just select that LinkedIn folder that I just created. And then Source, instead of uploading, nay, will not upload, create. We are creators. That doesn't make sense. So then I'll go to, I remember I clicked on that docker compose.yaml tab, and this is what it looks like. So I'm just going to copy all of this text. You can also just highlight and copy it. And then I'll come back and paste. <clears throat> That's all good to me. And then I'll hit next. And then under web portal settings, I'll hit next. And then I'll make sure start project once it's created is checked. And then I'm going to hit done, and it will give me an error. So the error is that it is missing this .env file. And if you notice this path that it's leading it to, that's the path that we selected before for where we wanted this project to be. So I'm going to hit close, and I'm going to make that .env file. So I'll go to File Station into that LinkedIn folder I created. And in order to make that .env file, I'm going to right-click this YAML file and select Open with Text Editor and just click File, Save As, and I will just save this as .env. Hit Save. And now I have my env file. So I'm going to delete all of this because that's that's not for env files. What is for env files is that env file we opened up, or that link that we opened up on the GitHub earlier, this uh, copy the env sample. So I'll come in here, and I'll just click copy raw file. And that's just going to copy all that text, and I'll paste it in here. Um, the only two additions I'm going to make here is under line 12 where it says ld super username, I'm going to create a super username. And I'm going to call it Linky. And then on line 14, LD super user password, I'm going to say Dinky. And you should probably make something more secure than that. But I'm not going to do it. I refuse. I like Linky Dinky. So I'll hit File Save. And one thing I'm going to note here is that this is looking for a data directory. So I'm going to exit out of here. And I'm also going to create a folder in here called Data. Because if I don't, Docker will throw me an error. So I'm going to close out of File Station. And now, Back in Container Manager, I'll make sure that I'm in the Project tab. I will right-click LinkedIn and hit Build. And now it's going to pull all the files it needs and install LinkedIn and use my env file. And it's all going to work, I hope. Might not, but it might. So it should throw me a code 0 if everything worked out. Exit code 0. And then it should also give me, yes, Container Manager. Project LinkedIn was successfully built. I'll close out of here. And then the way that I reach LinkedIn is I type in the IP address of my NAS. So if you don't know what your IP address is, you can probably just go to Control Panel, Network, um, Network Interface, and your IP, your NAS's IP address should be in here. So it's probably 192.168.something.something. .something. So for this example, I'll say 192.168.1.20. So I'll just go to that link. And going to that link, I am now, uh, sorry. So I'm typing in the IP address of that NAS, 192.168.1.20, colon, 9090. And that will bring me to the LinkedIn page. And if you're not getting here, make sure, there's a couple things that you can make sure. Make sure that if your Synology firewall is on, then you're going to have to make sure that you can pass through port 9090. And if you are typing in HTTPS, colon, slash, slash, it's not going to work. So it just needs to say HTTP colon slash slash IP address of your NAS colon 
9090, and it should take you to LinkedIn. And the only other thing that might not happen, this should work because I'm certain that you're accessing it on your network. If you're not on your network, but you are doing all this stuff, you're also not going to be able to access it. So the only way you're going to access it right now is if you're on the same network that the Synology NAS is on. But now we're here. So I'll just type in that password and username that I made, but in the reverse order. So I'll type in Linky for username and Dinky for password. That's the uh, settings that I made before. And I'll hit log in. Hey, logged in. So that's it. That's how you get LinkedIn working on a Synology NAS. And you know what? I'm going to add a bookmark. I'm going to add LinkedIn. That's not the URL for LinkedIn. I'm going to add the URL for LinkedIn here. And on for tags, I'll put LinkedIn, comma, bookmarks. I'll hit enter. And hey, check it out. I've got my first bookmark. And if I click it, it'll open up in a new tab. And there we go. We've got LinkedIn working. So now I'm going to slow down by about 15% and see if I can explain how this works a little bit. All right, let me see if I can backtrack a little bit here. I'm going to go back to my NAS and in Container Manager, I'm going to stop that Docker container, close, and then I am going to delete it. That'll delete everything. I know, I know. And then I'm also going to delete my LinkedIn folder. This way I can just start fresh, but then I'm going to create it again. Except this time you don't have anything in you. Okay. First thing that I did was create LinkedIn and then I pathed it here to this LinkedIn folder that was in that Docker share. So what this does is says, hey, my Docker compose that YAML file, where do you want me to live? These should almost be reversed. Eh, I guess not. Um, and then source, I'll just hit create a Docker compose YAML. So that's what that path is saying is when I create this docker.yaml text file, where do you want it to go? And I want it to just go in that LinkedIn folder. And then I had to boop, 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 grab the Docker Compose YAML stuff here from LinkedIn, and I put that in. So you notice a couple things. When I did Uptime Kuma, so I'm going to use Uptime Kuma as an example. That's a different app, but it's Docker, Com YAML, Docker Compose YAML is a lot easier to explain. So under container name here, you can see we start with an open quotation, but then it's a dollar sign, and then a brace, and then a bunch of words and things, and then it closes it out. Whereas in Uptime Kuma, if I go under container name, it's just uptime Kuma. So what this is saying is, hey, I'm actually referencing. I, I'm not putting, you don't have to put anything in here. I'm actually going to reference this from a different file. So most likely you're going to see a section here that says env file. And you can see env file dot env. Um, I'm not an expert, but I believe a lot of people do this. I, I think a dot env can help with security instead of putting things in here in plain text in the docker dot yaml, in the docker compose yaml file. I think the .env is supposed to help with security somehow, but the main thing that you need to get from it is that if there's an env file, that means most of the information that I need to change is actually going to be the env file. So that can kind of help you out sometimes too, because instead of, sometimes these Docker Compose YAMLs can get a little bit crowded, especially if you're going to add in every environmental variable. env is, I believe, stands for environments, and whatever you're typing in there is known as a variable. So sometimes it could be useful to just use that env file to make your changes instead of trying to make changes in the Docker Compose YAML. So then I hit next. I went ahead and created it because that way it'll create that YAML file. So I will close out of here because the Synology text editor doesn't actually let you. Yeah, here we go. So we've got the Docker Compose YAML file. The Synology, I can't right click a .env file and hit open with text editor. So and I also can't just right click in a folder and create a new text file. So that's why I did it this way. So now I'm going to file, save this as a, it wants a .env file. So I'll type in .env and hit save. And then I will copy this stuff again. Boom. And th uh, this is a super oversimplification of stuff, but kind of the way that an env file works is everything here that has a pound sign in front of it or a hashtag, I guess, depending on how old you are, that is more just here's some information for you, but this is not going to be included in the code. But a line that does not means this is going to be used in the code. So I'm going to use this for something. So in this case, LD underscore container name underscore name, we see an equal sign. That means that it's going to look for something that's after that equal sign. So container name, you could have changed this to whatever you want. You could call this link dingy, dingy linky. And what that's going to do with the container name is in your container manager, that's the name that it's going to throw up here in the container. Um, it will not change the project file, uh, project name, I don't believe. And then the port. So the port 
is how you're accessing this this uh, web app. So as you noticed before, you type in, in order to get to LinkedIn, you type in the IP address of your NAS, colon, 9090. So this is where that 9090 number comes from. You probably don't have to change this. The only instance where you might want to change it is if you want to have something more memorable than 9090, or if you already have a program that is using port 9090. So if I had another program, let's say I had Uptime Kuma, and the way I was accessing that was at on port 9090, I could change this to port 9091. And then to access LinkedIn, I just have to type in the IP address of my NAS, colon, 9091, and then I will access it. And then last here is this data directory. So it says LD host data directory. Basically, it's looking for a folder to put a bunch of data stuff into. And that's probably just stuff like your username, password, and any websites that you've went ahead and bookmarked on here. It's going to throw that into a data folder. If you don't specify a data folder in your Synology NAS, it'll probably throw you an error. But if you were to just get rid of that completely, every time LinkedIn stops and restarts, it's actually going to delete all of its own information. So you're getting a clean restart. So what this says is, hey, when you are restarting, instead of using your own internal data folder, use the one that's on my computer. And it doesn't delete that folder or anything like that. So it'll just look for that data. It'll pull that information. And that way you don't have to you know, make a new user and make new bookmarks every single time. Uh, the way that this list is listed might look a little weird. So that location on my Synology NAS, if I, write, if I were to make a data folder into that LinkedIn folder, I will right click, hit properties. That's the location. So if I copy that and paste it in here, that's the same thing as it was saying before. So you can do that. You can do that for anything in the future, but you can also use a period in front of the, uh, in front of the dash. What that period does is says, hey, whatever folder I'm in, if you do period dash, I guess that's a forward slash. Is that a forward or is it? That's definitely a forward slash, I think. If you type in period forward slash, it's going to say, hey, I'm looking for this folder in the folder that I'm already in. So it's kind of just cutting out everything, volume two, Docker, LinkedIn, because this is where this ENV file lives. So if I just hit period, it's saying the same thing as all that is saying where I'm live, but then a data folder within that. So I could do data, data, dash two, and then it's going to look for wherever I'm living and then what's in that data folder. And then inside of that data folder, you can have a data two folder and it'll just put all of this information there. But that is how the period forward slash works in reference to directories. And then I think the last thing I did was just create a username and password. If you go back to the installation instructions for link ding over here. Um, if you try and follow this to do what I did, it will be all wrong. Like Docker compose up minus D, you don't have to worry about that. So under user setup, Docker compose, one of the last thing it says is for security reasons, it doesn't provide an initial user. So you have to create one. And the way that it does it is has you go and do a lot of command line stuff. But on the bottom here, it says you can also create an initial super using using LD super username option. I wonder if I click that, it will, okay. Um, what we changed is what it's asking us to do. So it's saying, hey, that LD user super name is right here. But yeah, you can also, you can add users, you can change users, you can do a different user. I think this just creates the initial user, but it's not gonna create that user every single time that LinkedIn goes up and down. So if you decide you wanna create something real simple just to try it out, so if you just make admin and then the password is test, that is super insecure and you should never do that even for, even just for testing it out. But if you did that, you could do that, add a couple things, decide, hey, LinkedIn really works well for me. And in LinkedIn, you can just go to settings. Oh no, it doesn't connect because I took it down. But you can go to the settings in LinkedIn and add users and make new admins and stuff like that. So that's how you can do that. But uh, yeah, I'm not gonna save this because this is all garbage because I ruined everything and it will not work anymore, but that's okay. Hopefully that helps you, helps you out a little bit. Maybe it even helps you install other Docker Compose files on your Synology NAS. But hopefully, I, I think the biggest thing to get out of that is that if you see that .env file, that's where you're going to change a couple variables. I know it can be a little tricky, like what should I change and what shouldn't I change? Um, but that's where you might have to comb through the documents a little bit. But good luck in your journey for installing more container manager apps. And hopefully you were able to get LinkedIn to work. Oh, and the other thing I was going to say, if you were looking at setting up something like, I don't want to type in my IP address. I'd rather type in like 
linkedin.myserver.com or I'd rather type in, um, you know, linkedin9.com and that goes to my LinkedIn. That you need to look up things like reverse proxies or Engines proxy manager. But that is.